Hey everyone, it's Benny here, and this is my Freebit Minecraft computer. This is the fourth iteration of my attempt to design the single smallest and fastest computer in Minecraft. And this one does a pretty good job of it. It's fairly small compared to uh, other computers I've seen. And it, um, it runs at 416 millihertz, which is to my knowledge, the fastest running speed of any Minecraft computer ever, but, you know, that's, that's an accomplishment of itself. So, this is the output panel. It's the first iteration that actually has an output panel. <laughs> so, um, at the top of the panel, these are all the things computers send to you, like whether or not it needs user input, whether it's on, which is very important, <laughs> um, whether or it, and whether it's giving you a number or not. So, the bottom half is where you can send input to the computer, like you can turn on debug mode, you can clear the outputs, you can turn it on and off, and you can input a number and send it to the computer. So, I wrote a little program for this. It's a pretty simple program, it just does addition. Which is it's weird, because I don't know why. Everyone makes these big computers and the only thing they ever program to do is addition. And But, but it's just... Anyways, so here it is. It is, to my knowledge, the fastest software-based adder in Minecraft. So, a couple things happened just there, as you saw when I turned the turn on switch. Power turned on. And it's lit up this torch saying it needs a number from me. And it won't do anything until I send it an input. So, I'm going to go ahead and send it a free. And give it a moment to process that. And then it's going to want the second number to add, which I'm going to send it a 1. So here it is, it's wanting it. Interesting note, it actually is the single slowest command to, to get input from the user because it's event driven. And it needs to almost restart the whole computer every time you do it, so it's just one of the slower commands of the computer. So now it's processing, and by the end of the sentence, it's already going to be finished because this thing's really fast. So yeah, see, there you go. It's the fastest software adder I think I've ever seen. Oh yeah, and there you go, see, you just saw it turns itself off from software. And yeah, so, I guess I should show you some of the guts of how this thing works. So this is the whole thing right here. You might say, yeah, but I thought you said this was small. Well, compared to some of the other computers I've seen, this is pretty small. I've seen some things that basically take up this entire field and do the exact same thing and are about one-third the speed. So, um... All this, all this redstone right here, in this area, this deals with pretty much just the output panel and the input panel. So that's what all this is. As I said, this is my first time ever building one of these panels, so this little wiring system here is a little bit messy. I think I could do better. I'm going to try to do better in the next iteration of this, but for now, this is what it is. These eight little wires right here are for programming it. There's one wire for each program command, and down here with all the wires for processor commands, you can send as many processor commands as you want in each program command. It always starts on this, and you can choose what order you want them to execute in, which I think is pretty cool, because you can have them go through one single command several times if you wanted. You can make it uh, jump around to do commands in any order you want, and I think that's a pretty neat feature, because it can be it doesn't have to be chronologically ordered. And that's thanks to the go to command. So, um, there's 17 processor commands. Like, there's one like set ed as memory address. So, if you want to deal with pointers and dereferencing things, you can do that. This is the command for you. And stuff you'd expect, like reading and writing to memory, sending numbers in, um, set ending commands to the AOU or arithmetic logic unit, ba which is basically what does the processing in Minecraft computing. And yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's see, how does this thing work? How should I explain this? Okay, this right here, this whole big thing, this is the AOU. It has seven commands and it has three floors. So there's two commands for, per floor and one command on the top. So down he this little thing right here, this does addition. This changes the is thing to do subtraction, which I think is kind of cool because I can do addition and subtraction with the exact same thing. Um, this do is the XOR function right here, and the material implication function buried right here 
it's kind of buried in there though so um this is where the and and the or functions down there and on top here is the bit shifting so that's pretty much the ALU works this oh yeah this thing right here can invert what you get from the ALU so you can do the inverse of any of these operations let's see okay and then you can have the option of sending that to memory which is right here the thing I should go over for the ALU though is actually I'll go to that in a little bit so this is memory it's two stories it's not a very good design I've already come up with a much better one but this works and it's kinda slow but it, you know it's just how it works. It could be better. So that it basically here's where you send the input in. This is where you send input here to record to whichever memory location you want. You send it to which wire depending on the memory location. And here's where you can read it back out. Where it will send it into what I like to call the processing queue. Because here it can be sent as an ALU command. It can be sent as an ALU input. And, or it can be sent as a memory address. Or it can be sent to the output panel. Or it can be sent any where in the entire computer. And I like that. It gives you lots of power over the information. So, that's uh, a bit about how it works. That's pretty much how the whole thing works. Uh, I guess this is just a decoder, that's a decoder, that's... this is just jumbled wiring going to different places, so... I mean, that's pretty much how it works. But I guess I should go over a bit of how it goes so fast. Okay, one of the things that, that I did to make it go so fast is Whenever you send an input to the LU, it automatically computes it for all seven operations in sync, and then just saves that out. So that's a really good optimization because that's why we have the reading command for the ALU, because it already has all the information computed by the time it needs to find out what it is, and that's one way that makes it so fast. And that's that's um the memory is designed to be pretty fast. I've already come up with a smaller and faster design, so I'm going to use that in the next one. So, really the only overhead in this entire thing, since it can do that asynchronously and instant, so it's virtually instantaneously, it's not technically instantaneously, but it's, it's equivalent because it's already done by the time it needs the information. The real thing that slows this whole thing down is the fact that there's just all the repeaters. That's the only overhead in the entire machine, really. That's what's making it go so slow. Oh yeah, and this is the clock. And here's where it actually has a delay, so if you want to overclock it, this is where it is for you. So um, yeah, this took me about four hours to build. I actually did a live recording of me building this whole thing, if you're interested in that. And I will post a world save and some of the schematics I used for, for people interested. So yeah, thank you. I'll see you later.